It was January 12, 2004. 27 year old Terrence Williams went missing in Naples, Florida. Williams planned on attending a party that evening at a co worker's house. After not being able to find a ride to the party, Williams drove himself, despite the fact that his license had recently been suspended for a drunk driving incident. When Williams did not return the following day, his roommate notified his mom, who soon reported his disappearance to the police. Williams' family was quickly able to track down his car, a white Cadillac that had been towed from Naples Memorial Cemetery. The vehicle was towed for obstructing traffic. The tow record was signed by Sheriff's Deputy Stephen Calkins. Here's Deputy Calkins reporting the car. I got a homie Cadillac on the side of the road here. Signal 11, <laughs> signal 52, nobody around. Maybe he's out there in a cemetery. It's <laughs> up back in his car, I'll be going. Despite claiming to have never come in contact with Williams, Calkins ran a background check on him. According to workers at the cemetery, they saw Calkins pull Williams over and pat him down before putting him in the back of the patrol car. But when the family contacted the police station, they learned that Calkins had not filed an incident report or an arrest. Eventually, Calkins' supervisors asked him to submit an incident report. Here is his side of the story. Calkins claims that at 12.15 p.m. he first came in contact with Williams after noticing that the car he was driving was in distress. Calkins says he followed Williams into a cemetery parking lot and that Williams asked for a ride to a nearby Circle K because he was late for work. After dropping him off at the Circle K, Calkins says he returned to the vehicle to look for the car's paperwork that Williams told him was in the car's glove department. According to Calkins' report, when he returned to the Cadillac and discovered that the registration was not in the car, he felt deceived, so he called the Circle K and asked to speak to Williams. It is then that Calkins found out that Williams did not work at Circle K. Calkins says it is then that he called in the license plate number, only to find out that they had been expired. However, further investigation revealed that Calkins' story appeared to be false. There was no sign of Williams or Calkins on the surveillance footage from the Circle K that Calkins claimed to drop Williams off at. And, after looking at Calkins' phone records, investigators found that Calkins never made a call to the Circle K. Circle K employees were interviewed, but no one claimed to have seen Calkins or Williams there. Despite Calkins' claims that Williams' car was in distress, after the vehicle was returned to Williams' family, his mother drove it and claimed it worked fine. According to workers at the cemetery, they saw Calkins pull Williams over and put him in the back of the patrol car after patting him down. Before driving away, Calkins asked the cemetery employees if he could leave the car in the cemetery parking lot. Calkins was witnessed returning to the cemetery between 15 to 60 minutes later and moving the car from a parking spot to the side of the road. Eventually, Williams' mother filed a complaint against Steve Calkins. Shortly after, she was informed of the missing person case of Felipe Santos. Felipe Santos was a Mexican national living illegally in the United States. Santos was last seen on October 1st, 2003 at 6.30 a.m. On that day, Santos was driving to work with his two brothers when he got into a small car crash in Naples, Florida. According to his brothers, Santos was cited for reckless driving, driving without a license or insurance, and placed under arrest by Deputy Steve Calkins. Later in the day, Santos's boss contacted the county jail to post bail. However, he was informed that the jail had no record of Santos ever being booked. One question about the incident, Calkins claims that after arresting Santos, he changed his mind because Santos was polite and dropped him off at a local Circle K. A Circle K just four miles from the other Circle K that he would later claim to drop Williams off at. Santos's family filed a missing person report and a complaint against Calkins. An investigation into the incident cleared Calkins of any wrongdoing. Santos' wife questioned the quality of the investigation because she was never interviewed by investigators. Steve Calkins was later fired for lying during the investigation of the disappearances. Both Santos and Williams are still missing. There are a lot of theories as to what happened to Santos and Williams. 
Besides the obvious, Calkins killed both of them. The best theory I found came from Reddit user History Mystery. He believes Calkins took both Williams and Santos on something called the Starlight Tour, which would mean Calkins wanted to punish Santos and Williams for driving without a license. After arresting both Santos and Williams, Calkins drove them outside the city limits, most likely to the Everglades, and dropped them off with the intent of having them walk home. But as we know, they never made it home. Taking someone on a starlight tour is seen as a better option as opposed to jail, and happens most often to minorities and immigrants. This theory would explain why Calkins, at the time of the arrest, showed no sign of trying to cover up contact with the men. Multiple people saw Calkins with both victims, including Santos' brothers, so it appears he wasn't trying to hide being seen with them. The time frame between when Williams was driven away from the cemetery to when Calkins returned to the cemetery 15 to 60 minutes later would be a hard time frame to murder someone. But driving someone and taking them out of town, that's doable. Regardless if the theory is true or not, the facts of the case remain the same. Steve Calkins was the last person seen with both of these men. Ann Calkins lied numerous times during the investigation into the disappearances of both these men. Both Williams and Santos are still missing today. And all trails of what happened lead back to Calkins.